so I'm going to have Kylie sing just in other tongues. You'll, I don't know if you have it in a unction yet, but you may just start out in your own, but you'll, you'll get into it. You'll, you'll, you'll get into a flow there unless you already have. I don't know yet, but we'll see. Okay? So you just step out in faith. And you guys just quietly, you can still worship the Lord. Just make sure you listen. So whenever you're ready. So here's the words I hear when she's singing. It has to do with healing. So if you, I'll have you do this. Start singing out, but in English. And just on that healing word. You can follow the same chords or whatever you're in. But I just kept hearing in that melody, by my stripes. You are healed. I am your healer. I am Rafa. I am, make sense? So if you just find that little vein right there, because that was the tongue, this will be the interpretation. Thank you, Lord. physician
bless you. By your stripes we thank you. Oh, we receive it, Lord. We receive your healing, Lord. Oh, we receive, Lord. Thank you. Gifts of healings, Lord. So I just want to—I want to share this with you. They, they're going to keep playing here, and we're not leaving anything. But if you're wondering what Rafa means, maybe you're here and you don't know. But the Lord revealed Himself as Jehovah Rafa, which is Hebrew, and it has to do with healing. And it comes out of Exodus fifteen twenty-six. And the Lord said this, he said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God, do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments, keep all his statues, he said, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought upon the Egyptians. And really a better, better translation would be, I'll protect you, I'll, I'll, I won't allow these things to come to you because you're following my ways. And then he says this, 
for I am the Lord who heals you. So, is anybody here have something you need healing of? Okay, anybody else? Okay, okay. So, we're going to sing it again and just allow that healing to operate. I don't really feel like right now that I need to lay hands on anybody or anything like that necessarily. I mean, that may, that may come, I don't know. But let's just, well, I'll put it to you like this. Part of the gifts of the Spirit is explanation. So how many remember the story of David? And he would play his harp and music and demons would leave Saul. Do you remember that story in the Old Testament? So what does that tell us in the Spirit and, in, and from Scripture? That tells us that musical notes actually carry anointing to, to drive the enemy out. Okay? So you say, why, why play? Well, that's one reason. Here's a second reason. We're singing the word and Jesus more than once, and it's declared in the Old Testament as well, but Jesus just spoke a word and healing would end up miles happening miles away. Amen. So, so words carry in the atmosphere, right? We really know this on the negative side, but we need to learn it better on the anointing side. So even while we're singing, that anointing's going to go forth. So we'll just go back into, and it doesn't, I mean, this is not a, a written song, so you can flow with it, you know, and you can flow if you're not used to tongues, that's what's going on, it's other tongues, but we can bounce back and forth in and out of other tongues and get more English words along the way. So let's just do that. Let's receive right now from the Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord.
soundness of mind, soundness of body. Lord, we receive that healing anointing, release it into our physical bodies, our minds. Lord, we acknowledge that Christ has finished the work, that it's done. We thank you for strengthening us, physically strengthening us. Lord, strengthening and reinvigorating proper balance of emotion, chemical balance. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be whole and healed. If you're watching online, be whole and healed. In your nervous system, be whole and healed. Peace in your mind. Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody seeing anything? Like, not maybe not an open vision, but a vision just inside. You have a picture of something that's going on. Come up. It started during worship, but uh, song sang the lyric that said fullness of joy. And I got a picture of a glass, um, water basically, pouring into the glass. And it um, talked about, uh, you know, when we have fullness of joy, our, our cup runneth over. But that cup does not run over until you are full. And I kept getting, how full are you? How full are you in your own life to be able to receive from him that he has for you? Are you hearing from him? Are you getting those things in your life that he wants to impart onto you? Because without that, that glass will get full on the inside. There'll be water on the inside of that glass. But until you get that cup runneth over, it will not touch the whole glass until you are so full that you are running over. And I also got where if you are running over, you will affect others as well. So that cup will run over, that will affect others. You just want to pray? Let's lift our hands. Heavenly Father, Thank we you. ask you, Father God, for more, more of you, Lord God, for fullness in our own yes. lives. Lord God, that we would take that responsibility, become more full of you uh, yes. in our own personal lives. We will take that responsibility to achieve more and more in our own self, Father God, but also for the purpose of reaching others. Thank you, Father God, for filling us up, for uh, for that joy that uh, runneth over, Father, yes. in Jesus' name. Yes. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do you know, how do you get full of water? You drink water. Right? How do you get full of the Holy Spirit? Right? Jesus said what? He said, All you are thirsty who are thirsty, come unto me and think. He said, What? Drink. You say, How do I drink? Hey, your natural mind just does flips over that. But your spiritual mind gets it. Just imagine yourself wide open to the Holy Spirit and Him pouring out and you not hindering taking in. You say, how would I hinder taking in? You hinder by overanalyzing what He said in His Word and not yielding to it. So there's another principle in this too. The Scripture says, be not drunk with wine, but what? Be filled with the Spirit speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Now that's something different altogether. Yeah. Part of the way you can do that is praying in other tongues. And people say, oh, uh, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not filled with the Spirit. I'm not, I've never prayed in other tongues. But that's what you're hearing us do. 
And that's a way to get filled, full, filled up and full. Another way is reading the word, but you can speak to yourself in psalm. You can psalm to yourself. You say psalm to yourself. What do you mean by that? Well, obviously you're fellowshipping with the Lord, but really if you think about it, you're pretty much talking to yourself anyway all day long. I know I'm not the only one. There is an internal mechanism working in you. Always. You say, how do you know if it's more God or more me? Peace level. Joy level. Heidi and I were driving back from Great Falls last night. We were having some conversations about things. And we went to a a funeral and we are coming back. And about 4 o'clock in the morning, I'm asleep. But the Holy Ghost started speaking to me detail on scriptures to answer things that we were talking about. And I didn't wake up till almost seven. But that whole time between four and seven, the Lord was just inside. And you say, how do you do that? It's not a matter of doing. It's a matter of knowing that I'm a spirit. I'm not this. And that doesn't happen by you, by uh haphazard Christianity. You have to be purposed in what you're doing. And that's what, it's part of what Tim was sharing with us, that the Spirit of God was saying through him, if you're, if you're going to be all over, even the word on Sunday, distracted, you're going to have a hard time connecting with heaven. If you fill up with too much of the world's, even if it's not what we would call real sinful stuff, if you just are full of natural, carnal, you know what carnal means, right? People automatically think of gross sins and things. It just means natural. It actually means meat. Chili con carne is what? Chili with meat. And a lot of our Christian brains are full of Meathead, meatheaded, my grandpa used to call me a meathead, instead of spiritual thoughts, and that's what causes hiccups. You'll lose your fullness, and natural things will begin to take over. So you'll think like the world, act like it. Remember when Doug Jones was here, he said, anytime the church starts thinking like the world, the church is thinking wrong. Right? So let me ask you something. In the difficulties or the challenges, the mountains that you're facing in your life, are you, would step back and analyze yourself and go, okay, am I handling this just like Joe Sinner down the road? And if you, if you look at the comparison and go, well, I'm acting like just any old person would in this difficult situation. I'm not acting like a Christian at all. Then you're going to have different results. Your peace level, everything will suffer. It'll suffer for it. And so we got to watch out for that. We got to be aware of that so our joy levels up. Right? All right. I know there's more. Do you have something that you want to share? Did you have something too, Ryan? Or no? Or were you just pointing out Tim to me? (laughs) So this makes sense with, I wasn't going to share it, but um, while we were, Joy was singing we were just receiving healing. I felt like, or I sensed that, the scripture came to me, we pray in the spirit, or excuse me, we sing in the understanding and we sing in the spirit. That if we understood what praying in the spirit unlocks, and really what it does is it helps you be in the right, he's talking about mind, right? Helps you be in the right mindset. And so the scripture says in Jude one twenty, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. How do you build yourself up? You pray in the Holy Ghost. It's, one translation says you rise like an edifice, higher and higher and higher, which means that when you're higher and higher and higher and you're praying in the Holy Ghost, you're seeing things from a different perspective. You're more conscious of your spiritual eyes than you are your natural eyes. 
So when you're sitting there receiving healing and your mind's like, well, I don't, I don't see it yet. I don't see it yet. You get full that way. You get full that way. You build yourself up on your most holy faith. So guess what? Your faith in your own natural understanding of what faith is doesn't have to be perfect because you're praying in your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Okay. Amen. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Actually, some of you are just amazed by how much calmer you are now. And really, we falsely associate it with a building or, you know, the worship team or the preacher, whatever it is. But it actually, they're just participants. So the worship team, as you follow, will just lead you where you can go by yourself. It is not hard to hear from God. It's really easy. It's just that heart cry, that openness to Him. And then He speaks to you, that genuine speaking of the Holy Spirit. That inside... How many know you're born again? You know you're going to heaven when you leave. Do you know how you know that? Because the Holy Spirit bears witness with your spirit that you're a child of God. The same Holy Spirit that bears witness with you that you're a child of God bears witness to you about your healing, about your peace of mind, about your financial need, about your, come on, relationship statuses, about your business problems, about the same, it's the same witness on the inside. He lives in you about if you're single, about who you'll marry. If you're uh, married and, and wondering about kids, how many kids you'll have. Come on. How many know the Holy Ghost knows the future? We confuse things with our mind, our natural thinking. But praying in the Holy Spirit will get you where you need to be. Now, I don't want to, I'm going to give an invitation for those that want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, but I want to do it right now. Um, I still, there could be more here um, as far as, as, far as uh, what the Spirit of God would say. I'm curious if there are any teenagers that have anything more than anything. There's no pressure, obviously, it says the Spirit wills, but I can be patient too. If you need to sit down, sit down. You don't have to stand. Just keep your heart open. Some of you are looking at me like, oh, <laughs> Thank you, Lord. For those of you that are watching online, this is called waiting. <laughs> Thank you, Father. See, uh, I know uh, I had a minister tell me one time that they get nervous at times like this. Do you know why, as ministers, we, get, we would get nervous? Because I think I have to do something to make something happen. But I know the Holy Ghost. And I know He's talking to people right now. Because He didn't tell me to have a service like this just so I could stand up here and stare at you and you could stare at me. I know how he operates. I also know this, people resist him. That's okay, I got time. I used to be the chief knothead. Thank 
I know it's a teenager. I know it inside me. I'm not going to pick them. <laughs> I've done that before. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Galaceros <laughs> Lead by example. What you keep hearing? Lead it by example. Lead by example. So that's one. It's going to a teenager again, just so you know. You say, I mean, he. He's going to a teenager. See, teenagers will do this because I did it. And even, even adults do this. Lord, I don't want any more fear in my life. Lord, break fear in my life. And then he'll go, Go up there and say something. <laughs> Lord, I'm afraid. That's right. You don't want any more fear in your life. That's the thing about experience. How did Peter get experience? You walk on. You walk on water. got this verse, um, though we once regarded Christ in the way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. And then I just saw someone taking off their old um, coat and their old burdens and putting on a new coat and walking forward. Amen. Say it with me. Say, we are new creations in Christ Jesus. You just take off the old I used to be afraid, but I don't identify with sickness. <laughs> we're, we're close, but we're still not done. How many of you are you're, you're, you, you're seeing something that you haven't seen before on how the Spirit of God can move? Yeah, a few of you. I know, I know there's a few people, I know there's a, a lot of people in here that have flowed in this type of service, but there are people here that have no clue. They, they weren't raised in this kind of atmosphere or this kind of denomination, as we call it. And we need to be aware of that, especially as a body that flows. That we're supplying like we should. Amen. Uh, the Lord gave me a vision about two months back. And in my vision, I saw the youth. Because they're my heart. I love them. But in this vision, I saw their potential stretching out ahead of them. And they were in this puddle of what looked like the thickest molasses you could have. And they were in their, their garments of righteousness. They were still in it, but they were so worried about getting the clothes dirty. Like God couldn't 
clean up a mess if they made one. And I heard the Lord as I saw his hand come down. And this young girl had her hand stretched out just like this. And it's just like Pastor Sean said. I heard her say, Lord, I want to, but I'm so afraid. What if I mess up? What if I get it wrong? What if I mess up what you gave me? I don't want to lose what you gave me. And what she couldn't see was that the moment she let go of, I want to keep my robe white. He pulled her up out and he said, you were never the one keeping your robe white. Mm. It's my glory in you. Don't be afraid to get out of the boat. Don't be afraid to get in there and get your hands dirty. Even if the words coming out of your mouth sound funny, even if the words in your head have no application to you, reach out. It's not you doing it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I've got something, Sean. But yeah. I, I've actually heard it the whole service, and the nervous and fear part. Um, I keep hearing it over and over again. Yes, you can take me at my word. Yeah. You can. You can take him at his word. He is the smartest, most trustworthy father. Yeah. And if he talks about healing, by his stripes I am healed. It's so. Yeah. It's so. It's done. He was actually very stern when he spoke it to me. Um, if I said it, it's done. And past experiences, you need to tell them to shut up. If it's 30 years of dealing with infirmity, he actually never gave us an excuse to not believe that when he said something, it's so. It's actually not even a matter of faith. It's a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And we believe in that fact. He talks about childlike faith. Or my kids can do it. They don't have years and years of praying for something and it not coming to pass that layer of unbelief that starts to add up. But we need to tell our past experience to, to shut up. Yeah. To go away. Yeah. It was in regards of feeling, definitely. Yeah. But tell him to go away. I want to... Tell him to leave. Yeah. I want to do this. I'm... I'm going to push you. Push. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick a little bit. <laughs> uh, let's sing it. Um, we can carry with this. I think you should sing it. And just step out. And, I mean, I know you can sing. I know you can play. But we can just match the words to the, the melody that's already being played. And declare even... The, the words that you're speaking, the shut up part to the past, the commanding it to go, yeah. and stepping out, no fear. Your word is fact. Your word is now. It is truth. Yeah. I just feel like there's a, if people will sing it with you, yeah. there'll be a breaking. So okay. whenever you're ready, I'm ready. If he said it. 
we believe it. It's not a matter of faith, but it's a fact. <laughs> if he said it, it is so. So tell the enemy, <laughs> tell him to go. If he said it, we believe it. If he said it, it's a matter of fact. <laughs> so tell the enemy to go. Tell the enemy to go. Sing that part with me. Tell the enemy to go. Tell the enemy to go. If he said it, we believe it. If he said it, it's a matter of fact. So tell your past experiences where to go. They can go where the devil goes. <laughs> if he said it, we believe it. If he said it, it's a matter of fact. So enemy go, past experiences go. We don't remember them anymore. Huh. They were just building blocks to where we are now. So enemy go. We actually need to get intense with telling him to go. Listen, he's he is the toothless one. He is all bark. He is all bark. He is all bark. You have authority over him. Over him. We have been running literally from him, scared. So turn around and face him and tell him to leave. Tell him to flee. If he said it, we believe it. If he said it, it's a matter of fact. So put your faith to the fact. Put your faith to the fact. Believe now what he said. Yes. Randy, Tony, believe now what he said. Believe now what he said. Yes, thank you, Lord. Past experiences, go. 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 He doesn't respect me more than he respects you. Thank you, Lord. It's a fact. It's a matter of fact. Oh, it's a fact. It's a matter of fact. It's a matter of fact at home. It's a matter of fact at home. Yeah. Your experiences come up at home. You see pictures. You see all of these things come up. But it's a matter of fact at home. When he said, by his stripes, by my stripes, you were healed. Hallelujah. It's fact. Yeah. It's fact. Father, we take control over our minds. Yes. Our thoughts are your thoughts, Lord God. 
Father, our ways are beginning to be more like your ways. Father, you live in us. May your hands be in our hands, Lord God. May your eyes be in our eyes. May we see how you see. May we feel how you feel. May we love how you love, Father. Thank you. May we love how you love. keep hearing this same in that same cadence and everything but just concerning the devil he's a liar he's a liar he's a liar he's lying he's lying he's a liar things that have been spoken to you and the things that he's tried to hold against you and your past, those things that have brought that stealing, killing and destroying sense and activity in your life, it's a lie. And the truth always defeats a lie. Light always expels darkness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So I'm telling Grammy, God's got order. So I didn't know if I was supposed to come first. You'll understand why. Shane was talking and I had a vision while we were sitting there and I was looking down and Jesus was on the cross but the unique aspect of that was he was looking up at me and he was looking right through me to God and he said it is finished and we don't get that we don't understand it so after Shane started talking I'm like do we understand what it is finished? And he just kept saying, Kathy, tell them it's finished. I'm done. It's over. You're ready. Is that okay? <laughs> I'd, say, I'd say it's okay. <laughs> uh, you can't go wrong with his words. <laughs> oh, no. We'll find, it, it'll all work out. <laughs> Yeah, it all flows. Well, I had an interesting uh, presentation. I'm going to turn this way. Is that okay? okay. He sh the Lord showed me a fraction. And you know what the top part of a fraction is called? Kids, uh, what? Numerator. Numerator. What's the bottom one called? You know what a common denominator is? It's the same. The denominator is the same all the way across. Do you know that you can't subtract or add from the numerators if your common denominator isn't a common denominator? If it's a different denominator? And he showed me something, what you were talking about with regard to the evil one, you know. He said that Jesus is the common denominator. Mm. And so then when we have the common denominator, 
then we can give and receive from each other what he has to offer. Because mm. he's flowing through us as yeah. portals. We're a portal for him. But he said, if you have a different denominator, you're going to have a mess trying to figure out. You cannot accurately. It's impossible to accurately without coming back to the common denominator. Satan has tricked us into thinking that we should all be the same. We should all be, you know, I'm not like so-and-so. How many have heard that? Well, I don't, oh, somebody has a gift. I want that gift. And the Lord said, no, I've given you your gift for your place. The common denominator will always keep truth in line. It will always keep everything accurate. It will always be perfect because we can give to one another in a common denominator. So that, that uh, some of it is because it was coming kind of fast, but, but it, the important thing. As long thing, as you can read it. The important thing is that uh, thank you for these giving offering <laughs> things. They work very well. Yeah. Quick notes. And so he's saying, be sure that I'm your common denominator. Yeah. And then everything, every answer, every question will be answered because if Jesus is the answer, what's the question? Right. You know? And so I thought that was kind of neat. Yeah. I thought, well, that's kind of strange. He said, no, it isn't strange. Listen to what they're saying. Yeah. See, the common denominator has to be Jesus. Then we can, the enemy cannot come in. He can't come in. Yeah. We think that he comes in and invades our territory. He better not be that close to us. Mm. <laughs> he can't come in. Well, he won't let him because the common denominator, Jesus, will always keep the numerator available for each other to meet each other's needs by the Spirit of God mm. in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. New battery. Shane was talking. Uh, I had been looking through the Word just trying to see what Holy Spirit was saying to me. And then Shane started sharing, and I had read this. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. faithful. <laughs> it's not a matter of faith. It's a matter of fact. Yeah. And when you get that end of the, your spirit, then you, you, you go into the holy place not timidly. You don't go presumptuously, but you don't go timidly. Yeah. You do what it says, and you go boldly. Because you know what you need, he has supplied. Now, some of you, you're looking at me like you don't, you don't know if you want to, like a dog at a new bowl. You don't know if you want that or not. But this is the truth. This is what he said. You have to have boldness. You have to have the boldness to be able to walk in and look the enemy in the eye and say, uh-uh, no. No. Not today, not tomorrow, not ever. And so part of what the Holy Spirit's trying to get us to understand tonight is when you come, don't come timidly. Don't come with a timid heart. Don't come with a timid spirit. Come with Holy Ghost boldness. Let that spirit that is in you, let that spirit 
that resurrection power that lives in you. Let it speak through you. Let it act through you. And when you do that, you understand, God, I can do this because like Shane said, you're faithful. You will not fail. You cannot fail. So that's what we have to get, folks. We have to get to the place where we, we're coming with boldness. Mm -hmm. We're coming with a boldness. Understanding who we are and whose we are. Yeah. And knowing just what this is. We don't waver because he who has promised it is faithful. Yeah. He is faithful. He is faithful. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right, so I was sitting back there, and I feel like there's people here, maybe more than one, where you're, there's some kind of sin you're struggling with, and it, it's a repeated sin you keep going back to over and over again. And you need to be, it's, you know who you are. You know that you're born again, but there's something hanging on to you. There's something just hovering on you, and it, it doesn't want to leave. So right now, if that's you, I'm going to have you raise your hand and I'm going to come to you and we're going to set this thing off of you. Tim came up and talked about the glass and it being full and, uh, and overflowing. It was a little time after when I was praying in the spirit. And, and then Sean, a little time later, said a teenager's to come up and I was going to go up. And I said, well, I don't think I qualify for that, but, but maybe I do anyway, the way I act. So. <laughs> but anyway, what I wanted to share with you is God told me this. He says, well, there's a lot of my people are sick because I'm living rotters within you and you won't let me out. He said, and that's why lots of us are sick, is because we don't. It's like anything that we t take in. When you eat, you get a lot of food in you. If you don't remove something, you're going to end up being sick. It's the same way with the Holy yeah. Spirit. And what's the good thing about that is that is that when you let it out, he's right back full again. Amen. He always keeps you full and always keeps you going. He's, yeah. he's called living waters flow out of us. So I thought I'd like to tell you that. Amen. Let's keep ourselves healthy and not sick. And let us keep overflowing. Amen. That's good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. do this if you have never been baptized in the Holy Spirit with and received your uh, other prayer language your private prayer language or I should say praying in other tongues and you want to is there anybody here that wants to do that or I've prayed with you before but you're still kind of struggling with that is there anybody here that wants to receive? Scripture says in Acts 2.4 that they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. So other tongues is simply what you've been hearing if it's new to you. 
It's simply, and I'm just going to pray in other tongues so you can hear it. But it's simply just praying by the Holy Ghost. So preste pere dombo. It's not in your known language. It's the language of the Spirit. It comes from within. Now the Holy Spirit comes upon you and then you speak out. Is there anybody here that hasn't received that that would like to? I want to give you that opportunity. Okay, will you come up please? Is anybody else? Ushers will help you. You can just stand right here. Randy, you want to pray in the Spirit? Yep, come on, man. When you come up, just lift your hands to the Lord and get ready to receive from Him. Anybody else? I, I know there's a few other people. I just, and I don't want to run too fast. Some of you are hesitant about it. If you have questions and you're not sure, you can come up here and I'll answer them with you kind of privately, but... It's all right. Hallelujah. Well, I can safely say it's your fault the service went over. I don't catch the blame on this one. <laughs> I'm teasing. Are you, are you starting to see how this operates? And I mean, we're just... This is just a beginning, you know. And so there's more to come. And there's greater levels of the move of the Spirit with a group of people that are willing to yield and flow with Him. You know, as we say decently, as the Scripture says, decently and in order. So I'm going to pray for these and I'm going to have the worship team keep praying. But I'm going to go ahead and if you're are ready to go, you can leave quietly, please. Don't make a bunch of ruckus because I want to be uh, conscious of the ministry time here up front. If you just want to sit and stay until we're done, done, you can. But this is my release of the service, just so you know. So God bless you guys. Have a good night. and We're going to pray for these.
Wonderful. 